and welcome back to Matchmel Fisheries by Pop Strike Studios. This is just an amazing little runway. So, what I thought I'd do today is take a nice flight here down to Bella Coola. It's about 44 miles in a straight line, but I'm not flying in a straight line because I really can't be bothered. What we're going to do today is probably be a little bit naughty. I know I try and say I will be as realistic as possible, but I bet this happens when people are away from prying eyes. So, Bella Coola, C-Y-B-D. Uh, elevation of 107 feet, 117 feet. Two runways, 055 and runway 23. So, uh, yeah, it, it's not a bad little uh, airport. I've added a couple of little bits to it. But it does have a few, uh, has the basics there. I've had some trees and some forest around the course of the little bear island. Now I hope you like my new uh, colour scheme. I've decided to go to Air Superiority Blue Camo for the Robin. I discovered how to do that. And you can do it yourself if you like in uh, Windows 10's 3D Paint. You don't even have to be careful about it. You just cover the bits that you want with the color that you want uh, in, a, in a panel of some sort. And I just downloaded the panels from uh, from the internet. Cover those panels and away it goes. I've got a red one too. I've got a, it's a fast one so I didn't bring that today. So here we go. We've just taken off. We're going to do a uh, right turn and then what we're going to do is just follow the, uh, the valleys because really I couldn't uh, legally fly through this in the real world because the uh, the cloud bases are only about 3,000, uh, 3,500 feet. Um, they started out at about 2,000, but uh, in between starting and uh, doing the doing the video for you guys and for myself because it was a lot of fun. Now this is actually a 40-minute flight. If you want the whole flight, it's not bad. Um, I'm happy to uh, post it for you, so please just leave me a comment and uh, if you want to see the whole thing because it's beautiful countryside. Welcome to Let's Fly VFR. All the next plane 11. Props, jets and much more. All done in real world weather. make it as real as possible every fly. Subscribe, like and leave me a comment. Look forward to hearing from you. And I do, feel free to uh, leave as many comments as you, as you would like. So what I thought we'd do here is, um, it gets a bit boring doesn't it, if we're just cruising along at a couple of thousand feet, even with beautiful scenery that we have. So uh, let's go check the water out. A little low level stuff, always a bit of fun have seen a really fantastic bit of footage from a gentleman in an RV4 doing exactly this. Flies down this long valley just above the water, does a big turn around and then zips back down the other way. I've seen it years ago, but it's just beautiful. And going down there is a lot more fun, isn't it? So the wind today, we haven't really, not that you would know here, is only about five knots or so and uh, so I thought I would keep low level because I would have had to anyway because the mountains in this area go up to 10,500 feet so um, I have got a graphic at the beginning here just a quick look at the map if you see the or if you go to uh, Sky Vector or any of the aviation maps you'll see that they're done in squares and the squares will have a number in them and that will tell you the altitude. If it's a big dark number, it's thousands of feet. If it's a small one, it's hundreds of feet. So we've got uh, 8 to about 11,000 feet of mountains here. So uh, with a cloud up there at 3,000, there wasn't any way in the world I was going to get through that. This would have been my choice and I'm sure most people allowing for uh, their confidence level we we'll probably zip through here um, through the valleys uh, at a comfortable rate 
and flying at a higher altitude isn't going to help you that much other than uh, making a radio call. Now, if you're not familiar, there, there's a number of different frequencies out there that pilots use. We have CTAF frequencies, which are just common frequencies, you know, that are used in areas, and they change a little bit. There's a range of them. Uh, the CTAF frequency is 122.8 uh, for Bellacula, but there are a, a number of them. In Australia, we have one that is just used broadly across the whole countryside, but you have to be very careful because some of the airports uh, use the same one, so if you're doing circuits at one, you have to be very clear about which airport you're at, because other people at other airports can hear you and might be looking for you in pattern, not realising you're at 20 or 30 miles away in another airport somewhere. So, yeah, the one the important one is the uh, is the emergency frequency, 1 to 1.5. So, um, I tend to leave the one radio channel on that, so it's already there, and uh, I have, have done that here, and I've got the CTA frequency already locked in for when we get to Belcourt. I was looking to see if there was just a, one general frequency that you might use, but there isn't, so um, yeah, just go on with that. But it's worth noting, you know, there's a lot of information on the web if you're uh, sim piloting and you want to make it as realistic as you can. If you're using VETSIM or any of those other services out there, then they will have uh, frequencies that you need to call on when you're speaking to someone. But uh, with my experiences as a light sport pilot, we don't speak to towers because we're not allowed to fly into towers. We are a recreational uh, sport license, so we can just fly uh, anywhere around Australia pretty much other than town airports. Australia is pretty big, so it doesn't leave you too many limitations. So I've already flown all the way up the valley here. We're going to turn right, and the airport isn't that far away from us now, so this is probably 30 minutes or so into the flight. Get a low level buzzing on the way in. Got a tree hopping. Now, I haven't got off of here guys, so the scenery here is still very good. I'm looking forward to you guys waving me on my uh, landing here. It's still a little bit wobbly, but I'm getting better. It's been such a long time since I've flown for real. But I'm getting the technique better on the pedals here getting my heels off them and just having the balls of my feet down there and that leaves it a little bit more a uh, little bit it's a little less sensitive or it's a little bit easier to control I don't know how you do it if you've just got a twist grip that's going to be more difficult but you can do it you can do it so here we go flying around the circuit it's coming around the back here Doesn't it look good with the uh, the camo colours on it? I reckon it looks pretty good. Open to suggestions for anything else. I was thinking a chrome one or a metal one might look nice. You can still see the rib work even with the camo, so it uh, it doesn't affect the form of the wing. And now we're going to turn left base, and then come in on the final. So there we go, turning final. Well, it's all lined up nicely. It does move around a little bit, but there's not much wind. So coming in, get your scoreboards ready. Now as you're flying in here, you're looking down at the point that you want to touch down. But as you get to this point, about about here, you move your vision to the far end of the runway, which is what I've done just there. And you can see if I've rested my descent, which is, that's that was pretty good. Going through that wasn't very good, but never mind. But getting that, uh, changing that view will change the way you land small or large aircraft, guys. 
again let's have a look from inside the cockpit as we come in on final so we're getting lined up you want to be pretty stable by this point we're a couple hundred feet to go coming in it's a bit dark and, and murky so we're coming in now you'd be looking at where you want to touch down but now you move your eyes to the far end and reference the distance between the front cowling and the horizon at the far end and that's a, a lot better touchdown except that I lost a little bit of lateral control there and uh, but never mind you know it's getting better and remembering those little things and practicing those will make it better so I'm thinking I'm going to do some live streams and uh, just do short flights and do some training flights of my own and you're welcome to come and sit with me uh, while I try and polish my flying again because uh, yeah, it hasn't been that good lately it really hasn't so taxing into Bella Coola nice little quarter so I've added the trees and some of the buildings here there were a couple here the runways and lights and taxiway was here already um, but I've added a couple of hangars uh, the aircraft were already here I didn't add those so yeah there was a couple of little bits here but there wasn't much as with uh, all these airports that I do, if you ever want them, you'd like them, I'm happy just to send you the whole pack. And you can have the Australian ones, the uh, United ones I've got in the United States, down Florida way mainly, and uh, around South Australia if you want to tour around my home state. Oh, 40 minute flight into 12, that's because I was using the afterburner. Well, I hope you enjoy that little quick look. It's just magnificent scenery. It's so different to what I'm used to in Australia, which is pretty flat mostly. Although there are a couple of spots north of Adelaide where you can actually fly down some valleys, I guess you would call them. So, I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done that. And uh, hit the thumbs up for me. Leave me a comment. Mark me out of 10. Uh, you're allowed to use minus scores on the landing, it was pretty hopeless. And I'll catch you again here at Let's Fly VFR. Catch you again soon, guys. Bye-bye. Let's make it as real as possible every fly. Subscribe, like, and leave me a comment. Look forward to hearing from you.